Hey guys, Trent here, coming at you with another video. So it's Friday, went to the thrift store, got some good stuff to sell, some cool vintage stuff to show you, and we'll even look at a couple sales too, so let's take a look. So if you're new to my channel, welcome in. My name is Trent, I'm a part-time reseller on eBay. I do it for fun and profit, and I take you along for the journey. So please hit that subscribe button for more great videos in the future. All right, I had a pretty good thrift run today. Uh, got honorable mention items, items from my collection and stuff. Uh, got good toys to sell. Nerf, again, like always, almost always. Uh, got a pretty interesting little throwback, uh, flashback to the past vintage item. Or I say item, but it's actually a bag full of a bunch of little items. Uh, something that people were really crazy about for a very short period of time in the 90s. Uh, I'll get to it. All right, so honorable mention item from my collection. I found uh, Blu-ray today, Dazed and Confused. I remember seeing this one in the 90s. So we'll add that classic comedy to the collection. Picked up this hat today. Here's a Disney, uh, I think it's Disney Parks. Yeah, Disney Parks uh, Chippendales chip, and chip hat. Um, it was $2.99. Uh, I think that's got to sell for at least 15 bucks. Pretty nice little uh, kids chip hat. Here's an interesting one. Uh, I picked up this used uh, empty crystal head vodka glass, the crystal head. Uh, it's got its nice cap and everything. I'm gonna keep the cap off for a while. It still smells like vodka a little bit. Uh, it's got its original barcode on the bottom. I'll have to carefully peel the, uh, I actually dropped into Salvation Army. So I, I got it from there. It was uh, $3.99. Uh, so Crystal Head Vodka is a vodka that was made by uh, actor Dan Aykroyd, who plays, you know, Ray in the Ghostbusters. Uh, so I guess people want these for collection or arts and crafts or something. I think they'll actually sell for maybe like around 30 bucks. So we'll see. Be on the lookout for it, I guess. If you see one you and you can get it for cheap, pick it up because uh, obviously you can't sell. I don't think you can sell alcohol on eBay, but you can sell an empty bottle. So pretty neat okay let me show you what the 90s nostalgic item I was talking about I got it today $5.99 I don't know if I overpaid or not but I just wanted to grab it because it makes a good uh, video uh, I got a bag full of vintage pogs quite a big bag um, so I'm gonna lay them out on the table here and we'll talk a little bit about pogs because I'm assuming there's a lot of people that might not know what Pogs were. Uh, something that got collected for a very short period in the 90s. Alright, here we go. What we have here is over 300 vintage 90s Pogs. P-O-G-S. Or otherwise known as milk caps. So, this was a collectible fad that happened around 1993 I'd say it probably lasted popularity wise lasted for like maybe a year so you've got all these little pogs that are the size of basically a milk cap and speaking of that some of these I think are actually or they were designed to look like a milk cap because I think that's how the hobby got started was the inside of a milk cap or whatever had started to have these little advertisements and stuff on them. And people started collecting them. Kids started collecting them. And then they eventually made like a little game out of them too. Where you basically do some gambling, some ante for them. Um, and so I remember in, yeah, around 1993, these things became super hot and everybody was collecting them. They were selling them, you know, they weren't just collecting them from used milk cap, you know, used milk caps. They were, they started manufacturing them. So, you know, we started getting stuff like this, you know, kind of like a cross between, I would say, oh, what, like a cross between collecting coins and collecting trading cards, right? So here's 
Power Rangers. Here's one that says Air 23, obviously an unofficial uh, tribute to Michael Jordan there. So they invented a little game to play with these pogs. Uh, you had pogs and you had what's called slammers. And I actually have, I happen to have some of my slammers that I actually had as a kid. These ones, here's one called the bomb. So this one was made out of plastic. So this is like a thicker, you know, the other ones are made out of cardboard, the pogs or milk cap material or whatever. And then here's some metal ones, skull crossbones, skull cross, and a uh, little king of hearts here. So the game was, I guess, each person would ante some of their pogs in the stack. They would call it a stack. And then you had to throw your slammer onto the stack and try to flip the pogs, which is kind of hard to do. You try to flip the pogs and however many you flipped, you would win those. So that was the game that I remember people played, but most people didn't really play that game that at least where I was from, we just collected the stuff and played around with them. So these are more pogs from the lot. So yeah, there was over 300 here. Uh, they're just, they put, you know, some companies like a lot of these are Knott's Berry Farms. You know, some companies used them, you know, uh, made their own advertisements on them and stuff. And then you just have random ones. Like here's one that has, it just says death, right? Um, and there's some other notable brandings. Uh, where was it? Oh yeah, here's a Venom one. That looks very much, I mean, that looks like the Venom font and everything. Uh, pretty highly detailed little, little things, little pogs. Funny enough, I remember as a kid, I remember some of my friends went to the mall and they actually got busted shoplifting. They were trying to shoplift these pogs and they got caught. I remember that. They got caught shoplifting pogs. They used to have little tubes to put your pogs in, your stacks of pogs in, like collector's tubes. And then they even made, uh, you know, like the binder uh, plastic pog holders just the same as you would have for trading cards uh just for a short little while this thing was a big deal everybody was doing these pogs and because of that they don't fetch like a really high you know resale price now there's not a lot of people i don't think that are into collecting pogs uh because it wasn't it was almost it was popular so short of a period of time that it's almost like a fad kind of thing but i don't know some of these like this one looks like it might have actually really been a milk cap so i may have some good ones here anyway since i've got them all laid out i have over 300 here i'm gonna photo them now that i got them laid out and uh paid 5.99 if i could sell them for 25 bucks i mean so be it i'll probably put them up for sale for like 30 bucks and maybe uh, somebody out there that's collecting pogs, uh, maybe there's some good ones in here that they need for their collection. Otherwise, it was just pretty neat to see it for the sake of uh, showing you guys and uh, doing a little history lesson on these things. Uh, please leave in the comment section anything you know about uh, collecting pogs and did I get it right? Were they, was it Hawaiian milk caps is where it started from? Uh, I'd be interested if anybody has any additional information on these pogs. All right, other items I found at the Salvation Army. Uh, here was a little Frisbee. I don't know if this is like a, a lid to a candy tub that is also a Frisbee. So it, I thought it might, I didn't know if it was vintage at first, but then I figured out. It says Frankfurt Candy LLC, manufactured year 2020, oh yeah, in 2020. I paid a, a dollar for it, but it says Millennium Falcon YT dash 1300 f light freighter isn't that a neat little thing for a dollar little uh star wars lucasfilm uh, millennium falcon frisbee i don't know if it's worth anything but i had to grab it then also at the uh the uh, salvation army for 2.99 was this bag full of duplos looks like it's mainly lego duplos and uh, there might be a few mega blocks in there but uh, mainly lego duplos and there's some good pieces like the vehicle pieces in there and a really big platform and stuff so for three dollars i'd say that's got to be a uh, good enough amount to do a flip 
Here's an interesting one. I always like to pick these up. They they sell for a little bit of money. Uh, pick them up for cheap. This one was $2.99. Uh, this is a, uh, what year was it? 1993 Lannard Toys. Lannard, uh, yeah, 1993 Lannard Toys uh, Magic Math Multiplication. So you, it's got, you know, four times three, four times four. You push it down, you see the answer. Uh, it's about like a $20, $25 sale. So pretty neat little item. Pick up this item today because it was cheap, only $1.99. It's another one of those Hatchimals collectibles uh, carry cases, uh, collector's cases. I sold one of these for 15, 20 bucks uh, before. It was the purple one. So I saw this pink one here, I decided to grab it. So they have these little Hatchimal collectible egg toys and here's a display case for them. Easy first class ship, uh, so easy little sale. For a dollar I picked up this uh, little motorcycle. This is a 2012 uh, Viacom. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, motorcycle. Uh, since it was so cheap, I decided to grab it and see it, it might sell for maybe like 10 bucks or something like that. Something along the lines of that, so I picked it up. Here's a pretty neat item. Probably might be one of my better finds of the day. It was 95 cents. Uh, this is a Vortex football. Uh, I think Nerf later on picked up the rights to this, and so you'll see a lot of footballs like this that, are, that have the Nerf branding on them. But this one does not. It just says Vortex. And I believe that I looked it up, so I think the company, the, uh, the brand Kush, used to make these, and I think that's what one of these is. So I saw this particular color scheme, this particular model right here, sell for about 30, 30 35 bucks, actually. So this one looks like a nice shape. Uh, so for 95 cents, if I can make a 30 35 dollar sale out of this, that's really great. All right, let's get into the last but not least, the Nerf. <laughs> I had some pretty, uh, uh, but I had some above average nerf finds today. Uh, for dollar ninety nine, we got a nice little. Uh, I think this is called a Chronos, the rival. Uh, these are pretty good for about ten fifteen dollars worth. So, I got some more rivals. I'm gonna make a lot. Dollar ninety nine is a great price for that. And then I picked up this one. It's a little bit more pricey, but this is the uh, Split Strike. Uh, looks like that one's like about a twenty dollar blaster these days. Uh, it's a little bit more uncommon. It may have been like an exclusive blaster, so uh, you separate it, it can turn into two pistols, or you can have it as like a dual dual fire, you know, two barrel action. Then I picked up this one, uh, it's a little bit questionable because the bow piece on it is really bent right here, but this is a Nerf Zombie Strike one called the Outbreaker Bow. This is one I've never had before. and. I don't see a lot of them for sale, and I think it might be worth around you know 25 bucks actually. I see it actually selling even without the bow piece, and I see parts of it selling. So uh, 4.95 is kind of pricey. Actually, I got 20% discount off of that though too. But I think it might be worth it. Here's another one, kind of pricey. It was 12.95, but uh, I bought it. This is the Nerf Vulcan. I'm probably just going to part it out if. Unless it works flawlessly, because it, I bought it because it had the ammo case and the uh, one ammo belt. Uh, so that, probably that case and ammo case and belt could probably make my money back. And then I could sell the other parts too on it. Uh, but we'll see. Kind of pricey though. I think possibly the best find I had today was this bag right here. Uh, so this bag was $2.99, $2.95. And let me see what we got in here. All right, so this bag was a Rebel bag. So the first thing we got in there was this uh, Nerf Rebel. Looks like a little ammo pouch or a magazine holder. Uh, it's got some darts in it even. Uh, some of them might be Rebel darts, but uh, yeah, a little Nerf Rebel ammo, ammo bandolier, I guess. But in there in the bag was two of the same blaster, two Nerf Rebel, I think they're called Cross Strikes. And you know, I've I talk about Rebel a lot, you know, that it's a really good one. So this one has some kind of shoot around corners gimmick uh, blaster, pretty cool. So if these test out, I see these things are sell can sell for like 20 bucks a piece. So uh, pretty good little bag for uh, $2.99 if these things test out fine and everything. Uh, never, always excited to see uh, Nerf Rebel. Okay, I sold this little Jurassic Park 
figure from a toy bag, uh, $6.47 total paid by the customer for this little guy. I think he should be okay and a padded. Okay, I sold some of my Mega Bloks dragons. I sold the two dragons that go with one specific set, I think called the, uh, maybe the Portal of Fire, if I remember correctly. Uh, these dragons right here are good ones. Gonna help me make a significant portion of my money back. Uh, 93.03 total pay by the customer for these two dragons. All right, well, he's a 16 by 12 by eight box. I think they lay in there pretty nicely like that. Three pounder, it's a nice sale. All right, then I sold a Nerf Zombie Strike lot. This one isn't the best one because this is a really big Revoltinator, really long. The Revoltinator doesn't seem to add a lot of value to the lot, uh, but it's fine. Uh, so I sold the Revoltinator, the Duminator, the Flip Fury, the Fuse Fire, and the uh, Hammer Shot uh, with uh, uh, 50 darts and uh, then four glow discs for the Fuse Fire because it takes that kind. So that lot right there sold for $65.23. It's kind of low considering how big of a shipment this is going to be, but hopefully UPS will be kind to me. We'll see. Because this Revoltinator is one of the longer blasters I you'll deal with. Oh man, it barely fits in there. So how do I get everything in there though? It's not ideal, but we're going to have to make it work. cost efficient enough. I don't know. Uh, 12 pounds. UPS be kind to me. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Leave comments down in the comment section about anything you like. Uh, eBay, selling, toy collecting, anything like that. I hope you enjoyed and have a good one.